talking about the smaller budgets that you have. <laughs> Why don't you do what you want to do and then the last question is done to the mic. Okay. Um, I, I don't want to unduly uh, tax me. Push you one way or the other. I want you to do what you want. Okay. All right. Um, you know, as I said, there's nothing much, everything's pretty much the same. I don't think um, I have an asset to go on. I don't, what was the percentage of increase of anything in the budget for this department? Over last year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't pay you some of this money right here. Slight increase in your programs. Decrease in your different fees. So essentially, it's ending up about the same. That, um, I know that the emergency um, funds for residents is remaining the same at five thousand um, dollars. Program costs did go up, and I don't remember there was some something. A program that was needed um, for the young kids that encompasses that. Dues and fees are very essential. There are um, some software dues and um, another um, couple of um, organizations that the employees belong to on a professional basis. General supplies, um, that went up because of a copier issue for I think $800, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, other than that, professional services have to do with um, the social worker and and also um, when we get one, the um, director of the department, they have to be overseen professionally and there are fees uh, that are due there. So that's really it on the... On the um, so currently you do not have a director? We do not. We do not. What I can do is update you briefly is that we do have um, tonight after the here I'm going over to the board meeting and we will um, be putting a subcommittee in place. We have people that are on, that are agreed to be on board and we're just voting on it tonight and we're off and running. So that will happen sooner rather than later. So you are about to make a proposal for somebody? Do you have somebody in mind? No, we don't have anyone. To, we're not doing a proposal for someone. What we are proposing is that we officially have a subcommittee um, people that Christine, I'm sorry. So you're going to start doing research? Yeah. So at least a month. I would say. Yeah, we've got we have we have some applications in it that are in already. Some of them have gotten stale. Some of them are, are of course inappropriate um, for the job. But the people that are going to be on this committee are very savvy at what they're doing, and I have a lot of faith that they'll be able to do it relatively quickly and well. And who is that? Who's on the committee? Um, I don't have my notes in front of me to give me. Um, I have, uh, there's a gal um, who does that, this particular job. Um, if you want, if you have a second, let me just pull my notes because I have them with me. But they're making a recommendation to the board. Right. I'm sorry? I'm just saying right. that somebody right. will make a recommendation to the board. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Christine, I, I met with her, and she's she, on board. She just walked in. Which is good. Um, she, she, um, we went through the, the certain people and the connections with what what they do with this order, uh, with this department and the town and how involved they are. And um, I got her blessing on who the people are. We've contacted almost everyone. I have um, one person to check with, and otherwise we're on board and should be, honestly be up and running by the end of this week. Do you have anybody working in the department who's funded by grants outside of the, outside of the town? Um, just the prevention side of it. That's the only, only grant. That's covered by a grant. When does that grant expire? That I don't know. I've, 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 by a strange turn of events, this is my second month of being okay. a chairperson, so I would, kind of, I would have to find that out. It'd be something I'd like to know before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much that grant is, when it expires? And you know we should be anticipating anything and at what time. Okay. That was an issue several years Mary, ago. Mary, you oh, can answer the request that we put for follow-up information. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. I, I have a couple of questions. Too. On the program course that you had, you had the. Uh, the budget for 1718 was 2500 uh, so far 
for half the year you used 120. Um, the uh, 16 and 17, the actual was 14, less than less than 1500. Mm -hmm. So, what's the anticipation of 2500? Well, once again, I, we have a person who is new in that position, and so I, I'm not sure what what her plan is. I just know, if I'm not mistaken, they had to uh, do fundraising last year in order to cover some costs, and while they can do that again, they wanted to make sure that it, they had enough in the account well, to cover we, what it was. We budgeted 2500 $120 of the use. Right. So we're really tight looking for places where not putting money into a budget that we don't need because we're going to be faced with having to make some cuts that no one's going to be happy with. So wherever we can find where someone isn't needing the money would be helpful. I understand. Uh, the other one would be on the next item would be other items resident resident emergency. Uh, it, it was you know it showed sixteen seventeen it was five thousand it was budgeted seventeen eighteen for five thousand but then. Year to date is only three hundred eighty dollars. Is that some kind of something seasonable or something else? Um, to a certain extent, what I, I know for a fact that they they will use that money and need that money. Um, what happens is is that it's if, in the scheme of things when you take care of people who um, have a, a myriad of issues that are going on and you're just partially helping and not on an ongoing basis. That money will go rapidly. Right now, we're in the middle of the heating season, and some of the bills probably haven't come in. It's heating. It could be partial rent. It could be a helping repair a furnace. Okay, um, his, historically, historically, you, you spent the money. Absolutely, so I, I mean, and, on and that and line it, of less concern. But on, yeah. on the program cost there, that was just, okay. you know, not that it's a lot of money, but yep. it's it's a thousand a year. A thousand a year is something we could. Uh, there's, there's a breakout of wall with all the charges are in your books. If you put just a couple. Well, my concern is is, that is is right now in this current year, there's only 120 dollars used of the 2500. So I don't, unless you're showing me something. Well, it says in here it's for Memorial Day, Veterans Day events, any veteran expenses under municipal agent for elderly and veterans. And that so, has to do with the, with the, the upkeeping monument. of, um, excuse me, for the, of the upkeeping of all the monuments and everything right up front here, and it, that's not going to be done in the middle of winter. It's going to be done in the spring. And so Public Works doesn't take care of the memorial in the front? I guess not. That's under the municipal agent for the age, well, agent one, for the elderly. We'll, we'll probably, as we go through, we'll take a look at it, because I think what's happening, there's, within the budget, there's items that are being spent that are great items and we'd love to spend money on them, but Sometimes the private sector needs to be doing what they should be doing. You know, I don't think we should be taxing our residents to do stuff that, you know, to charitable work. I mean, that's not the function of the town. So right. I don't know how that breaks down. I'll take a look on the other lines and take a look at it. But, you know, okay, I'm just right. curious. So basically you're saying it's seasonal that that money, but you didn't spend that much money the year before. I think that they, that they didn't, I don't recall, I or think they this didn't was spoken to about something. For one reason, there are monuments that are, whatever it is out there, the lettering they, they add people to or something is, is expensive. And that's, that's they, it's not something you or I could do. But um, certainly I can look into that and make sure that yeah. if we can do something about it, we will. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? No. Good to go. Thank you. All right, you're very welcome. My pleasure. So, do we, uh, do we, what's the order? I didn't know if you wanted to do something like. I'm not fussy. I'm here. Oh. I got to stay for everybody, whether who's first or who's last. Okay, like the harbor and water pollution. But whatever, do that whatever, peak. whatever. If if they can sit out there and tell me what they, you know, I don't have any order here, so. Okay. You guys tell me. Okay, so we'll do harbor commission. Tim Yeah, Tim Sherry. Yeah, I get yeah. I'm, I'm more frank at the end than I am at the beginning. Oh, that's good. <laughs> there you go. Order, it's called 20, order bias. 20, 20, 20, 20. 28. 28. Uh, we're pretty much on track with what uh, we agreed on with the, uh, the selectmen when we went through there for, their, for the budget for next year for salaries. Mm -hmm. We're still struggling through uh, hiring kids for this summer, but we'll find. The problem that we're having is that the 
eleven dollars an hour just doesn't cut it anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm in the process of trying to hire an assistant because I want to phase out in the future. But um, we'll work with this budget for next year. Uh, so, so one of those three eleven dollars an hour we today and something else. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon, you know, we don't raise things in the minimum wage of the. That's right. It'll catch up to us. The, uh, the Board of Education actually budgets the hourly rate. We don't we don't budget what we'll budget line items here. So I mean what the Harvard Commission should do is that they should have, you know, come forward and said, listen, we're we need to raise, you know, what we're paying. I don't think we set the hourly rate here. No, probably not. I, I know that the uh the Harbor Commission and, I, and myself are going to we're doing uh, a little bit more in depth for how, next year. How many hours? How many, how many hours did the, the part timers put in all total? Uh, um, about a thousand hours a year is what. Is so, what we so if we that. gave a dollar increase, it's a thousand dollars. Right. Plus the Social Security and blah blah blah. Right. Um, and we have how many? How many? We don't. How many more spots do we have? In the marina. Yeah. Uh, we gained four more spots. Was the dredging? We only got four spots. It gave us four more spots. We got an additional four spots because we had we had uh, two more uh, fingers down here this year on the on the marina, and we also have now the ability to fill the marina. Where last for the last three years we have not because there has been no uh, water in the slips at low tide. Um, we have been decreasing decreasing our revenue for the last. Four years, let's say, down there, um, we were close to almost not being at 50% efficiency, as what we were, because I had to move everybody out to where there was water up there. This year, the um, uh, last thing I looked at was uh, revenue coming in for so far was like $97,000 just for the marina and the people that are there. It'll be close to $125,000 um, when we get done with what we make on the docks and on the ramps and transits that come in there and stuff. But we will fill the marina up before the season of next year, before 18. And the uh, revenues, I mean, the, the because that's one of the things we don't spend much time on, which I think we got to spend a lot more time on. But to, on the revenue side, you also pump gas there, don't you? No, 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 we don't have gas there. Uh, we just do the transits, we do the uh, the ramps, we get the fees from the ramps is what we get there. Tra tra you mean transient? Transient, sir. Uh, we do fairly well, with, you know, we don't, you know, not compared to a Cedar Island Marina, but uh, we probably do about three thousand dollars a year on transits that come in and out of the place down there, um, just because we're, we're reasonable when they come in there, and it's available to come in, dock. We collect the monies in the morning as a rule when, when they come down there and get them. We get a lot of repeat customers because in the fall they go south. And, and then the, uh, the winter, I'm mean, sorry, in the winter they go south and then in and then the uh, summer they go back up north here. So we get some of the same people that come in there all the time. What's also happening is that because Shank is, has opened up down there now, um, we're getting a tremendous amount of business coming into the area, going to the Aqua, going to Shanks, um, also the, the snack bar that's right there. So it's, it's turning into a central hub. Um, and we're, we're constantly moving boats around at the end of the docks, making room, trying to keep them to some kind of a time structure so we can get people in and out of there on the weekends especially. Is, is, is there a charge for that? For, no. So somebody comes in for a couple hours? They come in for a couple hours, we let them slide. If we only have a, the, the, the rule of thumb is, is that it's a 30 minutes or 45 minutes to come in, get what you want and get out of there. If they're going to be, if they're going to go into the aqua, there's no way you're going to get them for 45 minutes. What, what do we say? We have it posted. It's posted for 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Yeah. You know, it's it's for people to grab the same. Well, we're worried about, uh, you know, our snack bar functioning properly and people to pick up and drop off. So, I mean, with Shanks and Shanks is the lobster guy, they can go over there and still yeah. do them for 48. But it's not for anybody. To be going to act with, we having an afternoon to drink. But part of the reason we force that is these eleven dollar an hour kids. Yes. So if we have less kids, we can find at eleven. A uh, question I had is, you were you requested um, on, on part time seventeen two 
and uh, our first selectman increased it. You know that. You yes. Know that. Um, Is that part of the reason, maybe, to so give these kids a little more money? Yes. Right. Um, you know, that's that's what we're working on right now. So it it, it shows actual nothing. Is that for sixteen seventeen? <clears throat> Is that that can't be accurate, can it? I have thirty three thousand nine sixty. Is that correct? No, for it's part time salaries. Because right now, this year, we have we have a request. That something might be screwed up here. But uh, we have fourteen. Is the is the increase going in there because we were considering the fireworks? Or is that going to be a separate well, line? If that's you're you need, line here. Because okay. you, I mean, you have. What do you have? You have. It might be that. I mean, but it would be. That's a lot of hours. Christy, maybe you can enlighten um, us. Any additions for the fireworks, any considered donation is in the back um, under donations. So no, it's not within Sorry. that area. That was so why, why did you add $2,000 to the... It was for the additional support that they need down at the docks. To hire the kids. Yes. Did a great job, but I didn't ask. But back to my question, the actual, the, the actual for 1617 is blank. Is that inaccurate? Got it. So those are all salaries, full time and part time. So, so if you add the two columns, got it. it. Okay. And, right. and they they should that would show you whatever increase. So they had uh, budgeted in, in 17, 18, 33, 9, 60. So if you add the recommendation together of 14, 5, 60, 19, 4, what's that come to? Probably come to that amount, right? Yeah. Correct? Right. That's 31 something. It's actually down yeah. a little bit. Right? That's right, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're representing the Harbor Commission, but. Uh, I am not. I work for the Harbor Commission. Right. Okay. As a dock master. Uh, but I am, I am here because of the salaries that's involved. Right. right. I'm responsible for the people working on the docks and stuff. Do you think that there's some opportunities for revenue enhancements? There is. And whose responsibility is it to come up with those ideas? I, I'll take it from anybody. Anybody oh, that the wants to. The Commission. Really the Harbor Commission is the one that's actually responsible for doing this, but um, I give them a lot of feedback of what I'm looking at and trying to produce for the following years and stuff, and that's what we've been doing as we've been progressing along through here. Um, if we're, getting, we're getting if a you little. Like, when's your next meeting? We just had them last week, so it'll be so, uh, the second Thursday. You of the can month. go to a meeting and uh, share as a member of the finance, you know, because I think you had. Uh, it wouldn't be wrong for us to, to request, Tim. I, you know, I don't want you to get in trouble with your Harbor Commission, your chairman. But if we were asking you, we're asking you, we're yes. drilling you and say, give us some ideas on how we could increase revenues. Now these revenues are going to be way up because. It's at least six spots plus four, right? right. It's ten spots. Right. How many spots do you have? Uh, there's a total of six. Yeah. So you look at that. That's a you get 15, 15 to twenty percent more in revenue yeah. this year. So you got you got good income coming in, right. and we were in good shape on everything else. I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, the marina's in good shape. I mean, we're we have to put it all back together because of the dredging and stuff. We got to put signs on, some pins in, some hoops on. But I thought um, everything it looked like everything was put together. It's put together, but it's not permanent. We had some electrolysis problems with the hoops down there that go around the pilings. Uh, we, we got five of them that has to have to be replaced. We're replacing zincs on the bulkhead because the um, the, the bulkhead. If we don't put the zincs on, we're going to lose that from electrolysis. Right. There's some other options, you know, some other things we have to do. I'm just public, works, public Works is doing the zinc work now, right? You 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 work on that, Pete? I think yes. you're. So I work you're, you're working with Tim on doing yeah. right. maintenance on right. What happened was, and I think it's pretty good, and I, I don't hear anybody complaining, but we used to have like the, the Harbor Commission trying to do their own maintenance on stuff, and it just was very not practical. So I. Yeah, but I mean, and we would say, are we hearing from everybody that everybody's happy over there, that things are going smoothly now with this? I don't hear any, any of the bad comments. Well, if there's no bad comments, there's, there's all what good. we want to know. We don't That's want right. to know about anything. 
That's right. right. Every, everybody looks good. The Harbor Commission looks good. Pete looks even good. The shellfish, I look even good. The shellfish commission. The shellfish even looks good. My friend comes yeah. in. He's happy as can be. He's happy as can be. He's now, happy right? as a clam. Yeah. 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 Remember this. Remember this too. I mean, we haven't had any price increases down there in the marina for three years because of the dredging problems that we've been waiting for. So if you go into next season, I know it's not going to help you this year, but if you once you go into next season, even if you raised everybody up five dollars a foot. Which is not out of the ordinary. Okay, there's a, there's a considerable amount of money that can be made. I mean, I maximize every single slip down there for the size of the boats we have down there to get maximize what we can get out of the place. We can do better. We can, when it's time for a price increase, which is going to be coming next time around. Okay, you hit the ramps, you hit the price increases for the dock, for the people on the docks and the stakes, and you're going to come up with some substantial money. I like the way you think. Okay. Also. <laughs> Also, we're coming up with the extra money. You know, maybe Tim may get a raise too. I like. I like that. <laughs> Please like that. Maybe Tim might. Yeah. But I mean, I think the thing is, if you have an, if, if your incentive, there's an incentive for you to raise more money. I mean, that seems to me. There's there's a lot of options that have been been thrown around there. They've been they've been talking about doing an oldie show down there with cars and stuff and doing a craft fair down there. There's a lot of options that can happen, but we're we're, we're not. I know. Personally, we're not looking for that. I know. I mean, what we're looking for is run a boat yard, yep. not turn around and do a fundraiser. I mean, well, between giving you... contributions away and becoming as fundraising are, yep, it, it doesn't make sense because by the time we raise money, we spend more in everything else than, than we actually garner from it. But uh, the marine itself can can pay for itself. Well, it does pay for itself. It does. Christine and Pieta. I just want to point out, um, in a couple weeks, working with Mary and Don, we're going to send an email to all, to all the boards and commissions and departments for an update of the recommendations for fees and areas where they think that we can recoup costs. So we'll keep you in the loop on that once we start putting that information together. Yeah, and one thing about the Harvard Commission is, is that they do feel that sometimes, you know, they're bringing, they believe they're bringing more money than we're expending. In that you know, there's no you talk about incentives. It seems like it's almost a disincentive to raise uh, fees because there's there doesn't seem to be us able to pay for a, a piling or something else. I mean, it, it really gets kind of difficult down there. So there's uh, Tim has done a good job working with everybody, and uh, you know, Pete's been pretty active now and whatever that's going on. So I think they they work pretty well. And now that we have the spots, you know, we're, we're not supposed to be in the business. Of Really making money, we're we're running a facility down here. We don't want to undermine the private, the private sector either. Right, I mean, I understand, that. and that's I'm already getting. I mean, we shouldn't be competing, you know, exactly. with right. them. But by by underpricing, we are. Yeah, I understand. It, uh, I mean, I think the things that you suggest that you mentioned, I think, are all good not only from the standpoint of being good money makers, but building traffic. So any right. traffic, you know, and I think yeah. part of what you're doing is building traffic for more businesses that are. You know, like shanks. And That's correct. It's not just shanks. We have, we'll run four to five thousand cars in there in a month in the busiest time of the year. And those people go up to the mall right. and other places in town to eat too. I mean, so you're you're generating uh, for the whole town. Right. It's not just for one area. It's this is what's happening. People are coming down visiting, and then they go from there. So it's a very popular place, and you know, we we just need to stay on top and make sure that it's running. Running efficiently. We should look at our non residents. I don't know what the mix is right now, but we do have a higher rate for people who are non residents, and uh, you know, they should take that into consideration too when they're doing it. Yep. Come to the meeting. When are the meetings? Uh, yeah. Second Thursday of the month. You got Doug, Doug is our liaison to the Yes, he is. <laughs> but he hasn't been in the meeting today. Really. He's not been well. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? No. Uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? Water pollution. Water pollution. <clears throat> What's that? It is 23. Hey, you're Matt. Good. How are John? Good, good. How are you? Hi. Hi. Hey, Matt. Expecting to see some unfamiliar faces, but you guys have heard my sorry spiel before. Um, 
there we'd some, like to hear from Is there some place where you'd like me to start? <clears throat> Down the column. Well, you know, your <coughs> generally where's your your operation your <coughs> Yeah, the same ballpark. We're eighty four seventeen seventeen eighteen was eighty four four sixty budgeted. Mm How -hmm. uh, come of that? That year there, why, why through December? Was that 21 of the 84? What was that? I guess it shows. Where were the ones? So uh, uh, 25. Obviously, the salary is the biggest chunk because we're all the way to this date. Um, the stuff was budgeted a couple times there, and, and they were ended up getting used for a lot of different years and reasons, I guess. But yeah, the only thing that the only things that really didn't get used um, this this past couple seasons and it was because of a bunch of things that happened with our projects is the um, professional services legal line um, it's uh, it's better described as professional um, legal and engineering services I think is the new name for it uh, professional services yeah um, in the past that was for our attorney and it was essentially a number that that um, Hal asked for so that we could have it in our budget for um, you know for negotiating uh, getting on a property for our first phase of our project what has ended up happening because of you know how the planning process has gone and how we you know devoted so much of our effort to uh, that rocky ledge project is that um, we have come around to asking for that that same amount of money um, but with a slightly different uh, that different hopes and dreams for for this year. Um, we, uh, as you guys know, we count on our uh, engineering consultant to be our support. It's our only, uh, you know, professional engineering support that we have for our uh, commission. And I asked uh, Christy, our engineer, for some numbers on, you know, how she could maintain the level of service that we've been having, even though we're running out of. Um, the most recent amendment. Um, so that is that is going to be uh, that is going to take that place. As far as legal services, I'm I'm not sure if uh, if we're going to get anywhere there. You know, our, our biggest you know what we thought was low hanging fruit was to take care of that one needs area with the water main project. So that's still going to be the focus of our efforts. Um, but we still need to move forward. Most of it's in capital, but we still need to move forward. Uh, management program. So you have that, and the other item, which you see a, lot, a bunch of dashes, John, is the uh, it's listed as a couple different names. Other items. And what that was originally intended for was a um, septic ser service for uh, low-income folks. That was going to be well, uh, yeah, it was going to be five pump outs. You know, for people, we had so much non-compliance with the. Um, pump out ordinance at one time that we felt it would be worth it to be able to help out those folks that are just in a bad way. Um, but frankly, um, nobody's come forward and asked for it, so the um, so the um, selectmen re removed it for this year. Um, which is, you know, we requested a slightly less, um, a slightly smaller number because uh, we found that we had a greater need, as you'll see in the, um, in our general supplies line. So that's where we uh, that's where we asked for a little bit more, but it's uh, you know the first first selectman did not you know recommend that that one line be put back in. So those are, those are the two things that constitute the biggest gaps. Um, now those are roundabout way of answering your question. Christine, you had a comment. Regarding the um, the pump out for people in the community who can't afford it, um, I did work with Carol and social services and we're making sure that that does get addressed um, to people in the community so it's more of a shift um, okay. because they do manage it for their side and yeah. this is sort of a recent conversation okay yeah we didn't we didn't exactly know how to how to manage it or administrate the, uh, the program but it, it, when we were doing the um, 
when we were doing our uh, our ordinance, it seemed to make sense to all the commissioners. Would it make sense to ask vendors if they were interested in being charitable and giving a piece and like it deducted? Does that make some sense? I think that would make sense. If we asked, they probably would do it. The uh, water testing, 21,000. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, there's a few different water, water state testing water lines. Test. The state water testing line is, um, we have a couple of um, ancient uh, uh, DEP orders that we're operating under. We have quarterly testing of monitoring wells and surface water at the landfill, um, which is just part of, ha is part of our um, uh, landfill um, permit. And uh, then we also have testing of houses in that area. So we have the monitoring wells, the surface water, the houses, um, and um, what else? Oh, included in there is also the lagoon monitoring over on the so Drive. Do we hire someone to test? Yeah, there's a local lab over in, in uh, Madison that's been doing it for years. And they do the actual testing and recording. Is there any, is there any competitive uh, bidding on this kind of work? Uh, there hasn't been to date. Um, I've asked um, a few times throughout the years for... I mean, if they're the only ones, they're the only ones. No, it's not that they're the only ones. You know, we just haven't, you know, we haven't take, put it out the bid. Um, there's other folks that do that type of work. I guess the, the upside of them was the institutional knowledge, I suppose. They know, they know where all, they know the program. They know where all these hidden locations are out in the woods. Because they brought the fiscal concern that would mean I gotta, I gotta yeah. ask for all these... Well. No, you should ask. It's what I do for a living, so I, I'd rather see that beat to crap because I know that we, uh, my, my couple uh, go slogging into those. We don't get anything handed to us. Yeah. Those are state mandates. Those, those that water, that water testing. Uh, correct. Correct. And, 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 those, and you say those are old orders? Yeah, I mean the landfill and the lagoons. Um, those those orders have been around for quite a while. Does the lagoon kind of run out on us? I thought we we're almost out of that. That's not yeah, we're almost out of that. So what will so end so up happening there as soon as that's that closed? That's a big piece of it, isn't it? It's a good chunk. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it was a bigger chunk, but we, we knocked it down because DEP was being so non-responsive that I didn't think it made sense to keep sampling and sampling and sampling and sending them data and asking for their help and not getting their help back. So um, we're on a semi-annual, you know, twice a year. For the for the for the lagoons, but yeah, that'll be a savings of money, and that'll happen soon. You know, that'll happen within the next year. Is that um, reflected in here? Uh, the, the change? Yeah. Um, no, well, the lagoons aren't closed yet, so the what lagoons will have to get closed, and then there'll probably be a year of post closure monitoring. So that takes us. You so know, you're twenty one thousand. It takes us into the next one, into the next year. But there's two things. One is we, you know, see where we are on that, and make sure. Sometimes we have to. Uh, you know, correspondence, because my guess is the state will let you test forever. Yeah, that's, um, they would have even taken permits for operating the lagoons if it wasn't for how calling them up and telling so, them to work so and maybe, give them the permit. Maybe, one. you know, <laughs> that would be helpful. And then the other, if there is a competitive bidding for the process, it's, it's a, you know, what's left, it may not be worth it. That <laughs> that's the biggest part of it. Well, do uh, they typically raise their rates each year? I mean, they've been holding them for a long time, and that's that was kind of a goodwill. Um, you know that they had extended to hell and they've been holding that um, I forget exactly what the deal was for this year Carol um, was the lab gonna raise rates on us no, this year? they haven't raised the rates at, all okay. at least the last two years probably longer than that did we have bids in the last time excuse me did we have bids when they came in with the first uh, rate so we don't if, yeah. if we didn't have any bids we don't know if the rate was ever any good well, what I've asked for <laughs> Their rates were, their um, invoices were so hard to understand, and I look at these invoices all day long, and their invoices were by far the worst for me to understand. So I asked for them to break it out in a different manner so that I could tell if it even made sense or if it was even close to market value. And it is close to market value. I think the town could do a little better, but it's not, we're not getting killed on it. So if that's any, uh, any consolation. What they do, because they're the consultant and the laboratory, which is a little bit odd. Usually you have your consultant that sends stuff to the laboratory. And, um, but since they are the consultant and the laboratory, is they build in their, their labor just like they would with their samples. <laughs> so it, it made it very difficult for me to be able to tell what we were actually getting charged for. You know, and they say, yeah, six samples. 
kind of like money marker, money markets that you know money managers or yeah, exactly. brokerage houses. Exactly, a bunch of stuff all rolled into one fund. The uh, the, the uh, municipal annuity that this lab was connected up for. Gary, you have uh, anything on work for? Yeah, I apologize for no. coming in late. I thought it was at 6.30. Um, you might have already answered this question, but you were talking about the state water testing. Yeah. What's the difference between the surface water and the state water testing? Are, are they're separated out as two different items, but... Yeah, there's there's a couple different things. The, the surface water testing is um, something that um, the town's consultant proposed to the Connecticut DEP as part of a um, sewer avoidance plan back in the 80s. And what, it, what that ended up growing into um, was it ended up being um, included into a Connecticut DEP pollution abatement order. And the reason we kept doing the testing was that the testing was collecting data from around town at um, catch basins, uh, surface water locations, monitoring well locations that would support the, um, the whole process of doing, uh, of doing a wastewater facilities plan for the town. So essentially you have these locations around town that are all showing impacts of one type or another, if it's not nitrates, it's coliform, or different types of nutrients. And this was um, form, forming kind of a data-driven um, basis uh, to, to support the, the town's wastewater facilities plan. You know, are we going to need to do it forever? You know, I don't. I don't think so. It's. It's not. The surface water is not one of the biggest lines. The one we. The one that's called state water testing is the one that um, has less of a has less of a end in sight. We were just discussing um, before you came in the fact that the lagoon sampling will hopefully be ending during this next year, uh, probably a year and a half, um, due to the fact that we're we're going to be closing lagoons, formal. So that's a good thing. That was. Uh, there's, I just uh, finished some research showing that there's not a, a risk to uh, human health and the environment by what's left in those lagoons. So I don't see a reason to keep sampling other than to... You know. so, so the well monitoring, it's for community well only members that are on now. And why... They're individual wells um, under state water testing. It says... To the, for community well, for the community well at the Indian River Complex, what is that? Just, uh, There's a community well, who's yeah, that? More than so many users on a well is considered a community well as opposed to a private well. So that's the one who, that... Who owns here. that well? Town. Town. That's what supplies drink... Are you talking about the Indian River Complex? Yeah. yeah. That's what supplies drinking water to the Indian River Complex. So how did that start in the beginning? I mean, I have my own well. With my... Say that again? I mean... Under the public how, health code. How do they pay? How do they pay for water? Who? The community. It does. It, it's the number of users that determine what type of water source it is. Correct. Once you get over a certain number of people using the water, it's considered a community resource. Yeah, so Bob has to do a whole bunch of different testing. On it. Yeah, I understand testing, but how does this all start? I mean, if I have a well, I have a well. I pay for it. I monitor it. I do all the maintenance. The community well. How did that come about to start with? It's a well, like your yard. Serving 20 people. Serving and therefore, more. the public health code says you once you get the over a certain threshold. The public health code over a certain amount of people. It, it becomes different than our wells. It becomes a public water source. Yeah. So you have to meet the same standard. So, who, so who charges the users of the water? You know who charges for the town. It's just a regulate. It's how it so needs to be regulated. The town, is the town using it or is individuals using it? No, the town's using it. Town okay, so it's a town. Yeah, it's town. just for the town. Wow. Yeah. For the recreational company. When you say community, I thought maybe it's, it's a community. No, 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 no. It's, it's a what they call it. Okay, no problem. Port of Bowie goes through a ton of testing every... We get letters all the time. Over and over. Yeah. Might as well be the water company. Yeah, it's not a great well. Right, I, you know, I've only been in there, I think, once maybe. Yeah, and the, it was it was closed. You couldn't use, you couldn't drink the water. Mm -hmm. It was stopped. Is it stopped now? Can you, no, it isn't. What, it come, does that come and go? It comes and goes. It's not a shallow well, is it? My understanding is that it's a drilled well. Yes. Yeah, and somehow or another it gets it gets coliform um, hits. We have a lot of shallow wells now, right? No. We have it's, a lot of shallow wells. It's been, it's been sanitized and taken care of and both been working with the state. They come in and you have to they test it regularly. If it doesn't, the test doesn't come out right. Okay.
you spoke earlier about an amendment running out. What, what is that? Um, the, last, the, the last amendment, um, the last budget amendment with CDM Smith um, was for um, submitting the facilities plan to the state and then responding to their comments. So we submitted it to the state, responded to their comments, got a conditional approval, and now in that, in that con there's uh, one or two other things that are, are, are still covered, but it's down to a few thousand dollars. So that's that, an amendment to our contract with C.D. and Smith? Yeah. That's a, they're called budget amendments for whatever reason. That's, that's how the, the lingo was started years ago. And do you, you anticipate, I know, with these budgets, do you anticipate any additional appropriations that you're going to request on top of this between budgets? Well, let me see. This is our operating budget. We have a we have a capital. Um, we we we're now of the understanding that most of what we do would technically fall under capital. So our capital budget actually has the item that you're asking about. That next step. We have a conditional approval, and the state says. You know, you still need to do X, Y, and Z. So the X, Y, and Z are on our capital budget. How much is that, roughly? Uh, roughly 120, 140. I, I, I'm not sure where it ended and, up. And who gets that money? Oh, um, well, there's a whole bunch of different line items. I didn't. I would. I was right. prepared to uh, defend it tonight. But okay. Uh, yeah. So we hit the capital budget. And you'll come back. Is yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Christine, you had a comment on that. Uh, just regarding the capital budget, um, it's evolving at the moment. We're trying to determine where we're going in the next couple of years and which project based on the number of moving targets. So I'm going to be working with Matt, uh, Carol Walters, Kirsty Wagner, CDM Smith. And like I said, it's, it's still a moving target, so we can't really focus on it. We're, we're going to present it to you when we do the capital. We'll have, hopefully have it all resolved by then. There's a lot of very, um, there's a lot of unknowns in terms of some of the funding sources. CDM Smith is <coughs> right, quite, a, quite a bit from this, right, from from this over the years. Mm -hmm. well, the and that's, and there's probably more in the capital budget on that, right? Yeah, that's where they're going. <coughs> so we're looking at this, this budget here is really nothing to uh, Yeah, this is our operating budget, the only, the only bit that the is available. The top being will be the next one. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> Thanks, Matt. Okay, sure. Thanks. Shall I finish? Oh, I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think we were on tonight. Yeah. I came for I came to Waterford. Oh, okay. But I'll talk to anybody. Okay. There are 29 shots. Sorry. <laughs> You're at a disadvantage because you don't have the budget. I'm very unprepared, but I can answer questions if you have them. <laughs> this is the shellfish tab 29. Thank you. So, to the rough uh, 17, 18, or 2,500, or 2,770. $2, and the breakout. All there. Well, it looks like you requested quite a bit more than the selectmen came back with. What were you thinking, $6,900? This should be a very different year for shell fishing in Clinton. We're just about to get uh, recreational approval, which we haven't had since well before I've been here. I don't know when it was taken away. Um, but if that goes through, We'll need to seed the area with clams. We'll need to um, issue permits, things like that. Issue, um, uh, work on our website, have brochures for guidance, you know, how to shellfish, you know, how to clam, things like that. So that is part of the change from last year to this year. If you open it up to recreational shellfishing, and you were selling permits. How many permits do you think you'd sell, and how much would you sell them for? We have yet to decide that. Uh, we we haven't we haven't set a fee yet. You know we're we're still trying to 
do the water sampling, we now have to submit meat samples to the state. So it's becoming a very busy year for us. We, just, would, we want to get the approval. They wouldn't be able to exceed Guilford's out of town, right? Fair. What, 75? For $75 <laughs> they, a year for an out of town. Yeah. So they surely couldn't charge more than that because the clam is better down there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just what it's, it's the nature of and typically where we are. Permit money goes back into the program to see the area. You know, to if we've been seeding for years, who has? Haven't we been seeding for years? That's the oyster. We've done That's some oyster, oyster seeding. Oyster seeding. But if we get a recreational area, uh, which would be just east of the, or excuse me, south of the town beach, we would need to seed that area. Has anybody tried the daily clam? There's a few there. My guess is I'll take you some spots out there and get plenty of clams. Well, then maybe we don't have to seed. But, but you know, if, if you clams, send them... Clams are easier than the joysters. Uh, if you charge people, you want them to be able to what, what break thing, something one out. One thing that I find outrageous is Madison. They go buy clams. They drop them in the beach. They're all there. People pick them up, and it's really not seen. So, I, I mean, they got a weird program down there. I mean, I don't know if you guys have. But if you can get kids out there. Yeah, no. well, it's like an Easter egg hunt. I mean, yeah. really. But well, maybe it should be under a different program, though. I, I don't know if I want to put it under shellfish. But, you know, if you, you know, the, the, the oysters are, you know, did you have any, were you thinking about oysters in that number you had there, though? Just no. clams. How likely is it that you are going to get approved for clams? The state has, I, it should happen, but the, but the state is doing a shoreline survey. We were skipped over. Every three years they do one. We were skipped over, so it's been six years. So it's very important for us to get the shoreline survey done, help them do that, which involves looking at septic systems, marinas, so we're helping them collect some of that data. So we can show that in the off season, clamming would be in the winter, by the way. Uh, the boats here in the summertime, the state wouldn't let us do it. Um, and then there's the limitations, rain, this, that, blah, blah. You know, you probably. It could be a conditional area, but that's why we do water sampling. Uh, if there's a big rain, they may shut it down for a few days until we can sample the water. If you would have to constantly say, because I know I have a place at the Cape and. You could clam up there, but they test it like every other week to make sure that it's safe. Right. Plus, they have enforcement officers. Are you going to have an enforcement officer? To no. the, um, the shellfish commissioners are technically constables, so we're going to have to keep an eye on things. Um, I'm assuming. Those, I'm watch all those people waiting out there. I'm assuming there's no money in the budget for us to pay, uh, pay constables to do that. I love snails. There, you can, you can pick can you those periwinkles? I don't know of any restrictions against them. Yeah, I'd be interested in, in say, kind of a business. I mean, conch used to be a big thing out here. I mean, it was conch all over the place. I don't think there's any conch left. But they were wiped out by a red tide, they never came back. A business plan for what the permit fees would be? Yeah, well, yeah what, you, what you think you'd get, and if, if, it, makes, if it makes business sense. You know, how, how that, you know, I'd like to see the case for it. The case for having a recreational area? Yeah, the, yeah. what the what the tangible and intangible benefits are. Well, the intangibles would be that we're just about the only town on the shoreline that doesn't have one. And if we're a vacation destination for people who come here in the summertime to have plastered all over town their yellow no shell fishing signs, I don't think that's, all, all think that's is, very nice. What does all the state look at? I don't know. Westbrook doesn't have it. I know Westbrook doesn't have it. Shellfish. You, you just they have too many marinas. You said it's only going to be in the winter. Yeah. Because that's when and the boats are. Boats. Mm -hmm. Right, so they would have the signs up in the summer. The, the rivers are challenges, too. They're different. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be as clean as you want down here, and everybody up river is, you know. I, mean, I, I just would be interested. I mean, if you want to say, the, you know, put a price on the intangibles of what you think it's worth, but I think. I'd, I'd be, I mean, if you're asking for more money, I'd like to know what's, I'd like to see the case. If, if uh, you didn't, I mean, you're not asking for more. The, the Board of Selectmen had brought it down. You don't seem to be fighting that. 
But if you were fighting it, you wanted that money in, I would be, I would be, for me to even consider it, I'd have to well, see. The actual some spending, you know, if you look, you know, if you look at what's been spent, I mean, some of it is is historically looking at what's been spent. And maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe there's a chance that there'd be funding if there was a more detailed plan of it than just saying we're trying to open up recreational planning. Well, obviously, it's a big variable waiting on the state, but um, on the 13th of January, we were at the um, joint commissions meeting where all the shellfish commissions on the shoreline of Connecticut meet, and Dave Carey from uh, DABA talked to myself and Wayne Church and said, we're going to make this happen. They've had cutbacks, which has really hurt us. DABA? Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Aquaculture. Okay. So they're who we report to. That's where we send our water samples to. Right. And they've had big cutbacks, which has hurt us. A lot of times we take water samples and then they, then they don't have a technician who can process the samples. So there was a hint that we might not get recreational approval this year because of the backlog. But he pulled us aside and said, we owe this to Clinton. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that was huge. Mm -hmm. So, it's another one of the meetings you can pop in on. I get uh, you guys meet right out here at the table, right? Sometimes that's what we're left with, <laughs> <laughs> but usually at the police station. So I, I was not here. Any other questions? Thank you all for. Filling in. Starting that load. <laughs> Only a half a bush. Yeah. Okay. Park and Rack. Half 27. First, you want me to start? Keep a little overview and then we'll ask. Okay. Uh, I think I'd like to open it up in saying that when we prepared our budget this year, uh, we made every effort to come in at zero or below. And we did an outstanding job of doing that. Um, however, the only increase that actually came back into our budget was the reinstatement of the salary for the permanent part time uh, maintenance person. And that was the area that inflated the budget that uh, we previously had put together. So we actually were in line with our intentions and what we thought uh, we could be beneficial to the town as far as uh, our monies. So what was that back in? That, that was underneath uh, uh, permanent part-time worker custodian. It's a permanent part-time? Yes. So that means it went from... <coughs> it was moved out two years ago, John, and went into the Washington. It's a new item for 15000 Where's that? It's at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Custodian maintenance? Right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not a new item. It's always been there. It was moved out of budget, uh, the previous budget, and then it was put back in uh, this budget. That position was always there. Okay. It was moved out, moved back, yes. back in. What was? Why? Why was it out? Why is it back in? It went out because they're cons consolidating you know, all the, the part-time and the town employees yeah. into one pool, John. Uh, however, that person does report to me. He get his orders directly from me. He is responsible for it's the only only uh, permanent part-time, full-time person I have. He's not full-time. He's part-time. Uh, to maintain uh, my, my facility up at Indian River uh, and at the beach and at the uh, Peters Complex as well. So the reason you call them permanent part-time is because they're like the part-time employees in the rest of the town. You have the lifeguards and others you call part-time, right? Those are seasonal, yes. A permanent part-time job would be year-round, year 19 and a half hours. 
and I have two of those people. I have a clerk, which is permanent part-time, and I have the custodian, who is uh, permanent part-time. And those are year-round, 19 and a half hours. It seems I have the benefits. No benefits. To the permanent part-time? No benefits. No, less than 19 and a half hours. There are no benefits, and I receive benefits. And the, uh, I don't know how I got into this big discussion about $11 for the head lifeguard. Where did I see that? Uh, that discussion? I asked you. I know. I said, do you want to help you not drowning and you need to be saved? Yeah, that was a, a year ago. Yes, he said, well, that that's a little amount of money to. Well, to, we just heard from, you know, like the uh, talk about, uh, you know, Again, I'm looking for everybody look at this trying to save money, but then again, in some of these areas, I mean, you know, we, we have to look at if we're not attracting, I mean, have we had a problem like attracting lifeguards or anything? Yes, we have. It's very difficult because they have to go through a lot of certifications now. Uh, it's, not, it's not that nice sunbathing job you, you sit in. There are a lot of responsibilities to go with it, John. So within this budget? Yes. Is it still $11 for the head lifeguard? Yes. I have not, I did not increase it. Um, uh, it has remained the same. Uh, depending on how long they are there, I, I am budget for, budgeted for up to twelve fifty for the head guard, which is in line with other towns. Right, so, so you, My other guards are budgeted for eleven, which has been the same for the last two years. So, so the lowest amount you pay to any lifeguard is eleven? Uh, so when, when I asked the questions, it was ten. Right. For them, and it was 11 for the lead kind. Right. That that's where we started at the first time they come ten. at 10. Now, of course, the cost of living has gone up, so it's a little bit more. Well, started. as I said before, I mean, eventually we're going to have to pay them minimum wage. Yes. So. And like I said, I do try to, to have them come back every year. And it, and the thing of it is, and, and you know that. Uh, our town beach is one of our major resources in the summer, but they're, they're more than waiting for somebody to drown, John. Uh, last year, there was actually three drownings at state parks, and... Um, uh, Silver Beach was one of them, right? Our, our beach, no. Oh, so Silver, Silver Sand. Yeah, Kent, Kent Park was another one, deep. yes. So there was actually three. So it was a, a serious thing. I will say this, besides that, to provide uh, uh, tremendous service for just cuts and bruises, ice packs. Uh, probably this year, one of the biggest things we had, uh, an older gentleman who had frustration and could have really went out permanently if it wasn't for lifeguards right there. Uh, and I observed them, they were textbook, but they did. So they actually saved the man's life. EMTs came afterwards and they thought it was fantastic. So they, you know, they also monitor our splash bag down there. Um, they do pick up uh, when we need it. Uh, so, you know, they, they uh, provide a number of functions besides just waiting for somebody to drown. How and we have had two saves in the last five years, by the way. How many are there lifeguards? We have two on duty daily. And I have a pool of five lifeguards that would rotate seven days a week. What's the hours like on a splash pad? I've heard uh, it uses a lot of water. Is there some way? To well, it's monitored. Yeah. So we, we find maybe another water saving head, or I, I know I might like, get the feeling of buckets of water coming on me, but who, who's, who's responsible for that piece? We, we, actually, we've done that. We've monitored that. We've put in the, the lowest volume heads now, currently, that are in there from when it first came. So we have cut back on that, and it is monitored daily. The only hours it's in operation is during when the lifeguards are on duty, then it's shut down. Uh, it does not run continuously. You have to push a button, start up button. It only runs for one minute, then it shuts off automatically. So it doesn't run continuously. Yeah. It's well monitored. Any other questions? Uh, you have uh, pro programs for which people pay to participate, soccer programs, and I don't know what all, but a lot of different programs. And then that the money that people pay into those programs go into a separate account, and that pays for referees or whatever. Is that correct? That is correct. It's called the Activity Revolving Fund. Can you give us some idea about how much money goes through that fund each year? 
a year approximately, about 220,000 approximately. And it, 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 it varies, but the last few years around that, uh, and I will tell you that uh, it's, it's not a budget item, taxpayer budget item, okay? It's strictly activity revolving fund. People do pay that fee, okay, uh, to, to have their kids involved in those programs. It is, uh, I do monitor that regularly with the finance director to make sure money going in is covering money going out. It's also audited every year. So it, it's, uh, it's well balanced, it's well balanced. Well, fund. who's doing the audit? The town does the audit. They don't, they don't audit that account. Do they? The auditors look at all of the, all of funds. So they're looking they're at that revolving fund. fund. They do look at so look at the money in, the money out. Yeah. And basically, we don't have any employees that are getting paid out of this fund. This would be the higher, the, the, the refs and so on and so forth. I mean, instructors. Right. So they're, they're like not even, how, how do we, how do we deal with them? How do we, what do we treat them as? Uh, what kind of a, what do we got to give them? Those stipends? Are those no, stipends? you still got the IRS, does, the IRS wants to know everything. Well, you have to report. Yeah, you, but yeah, you, you have to give them a 1099 or something, right? right. They have, mm -hmm. that, 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 but at what point, you know, the... All of the fees, all of the expense goes through the regular process, it goes through our accounts payable department, their vendors on the I can't hear you. Their vendors on our file, and if any of them make a certain amount, then they get a 1099 miscellaneous at the end of the fiscal year, or at the end of the calendar year, that they need to file on their account. $1,000? $600. 600 How do you handle cash? Cash is collected, a receipt is giving out, and then it is uh, counted in my office, and then it is brought down weekly to uh, the finance department. How much did you say we you, well, you get receipts? We receive all of that. Yes, Diane takes care of that, and it gets posted in, in our ledgers and then um, deposited in the bank at whatever we have, the funds that come down. She gets 20 bucks. Weekly, you. Who, who, who creates the receipt, though? That's what I want to know. Who creates the receipt? When they come right now, on, they can also pay online and pay with credit card now. So a lot of that well, that's a different. That's a different methodology. Right, but it, I mean, it's all part of the, the activity of the following fund where those funds go into. Uh, people come in to sign up for, say, basketball, and they want to pay cash, okay? Mm -hmm. We will take the cash, we will give them a receipt. We have a receipt in our book. Um, at, at the end of the week, because all, all our monies go in weekly to account for the finance, that money is counted, uh, the receipt is given, they count the money. Actually, we bring it to the bank now. The bank counts it, we get a receipt from them. Then we go to finance. At the end of a week? At the end of the week. Not on a daily basis? Not on a daily, not unless there's a lot of registrations going on, but uh, we'll, we do we suggest people give us checks and uh, pay online? And yeah, right now, uh, yeah. Do, how much, do we deal with that much cash? I don't think you do. No, not, 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 not as much, not anymore. There is some, but not, not like the education. Not since the online uh, program. That's what we went to, uh, right? So out of 220000 a year, how much do you think is cash? How, how much would you estimate is cash? I don't know. Right? You have any idea? Uh, that's hard to say, but I, I, I won't even say it, it, it's a third. Uh, I'm trying to recollect right now uh, the checks we bring down, the cash we bring down. Actually, the most cash that we bring down is from our receipts from Town Beach. Uh, that, right, is that I understand. But most people pay either with check or online or with a credit card. They can pay with credit card in my office as well. And most people pay. Since we've uh, put in RecPro, which is our, our software, uh, most people do use their credit cards. It's more of a convenience. For them. Is RecPro uh, interface online too? Uh, you you can you you can uh, register online. Yes, we, we have our own website and, and accept payment online. Yes. And do we sell merchandise online? No. Do, do we sell merchandise? T-shirts? Anything? No, we do. No, Hats? We do. Nothing. 
So there are no uniforms for anybody in the, the uniforms, uh, the only uniforms that uh, people pay for are we like the soccer program, the basketball program that's built into the fee. So for basketball, depending on the grade, uh, depending if it's regular park and rec basketball or if it's park and rec travel, uh, there's a fee for that that's built in. So the fees range from $10 to $30 depending on uh, the level of play that they're at. And that, they get a uh, uniform provided with that, but they pay for that themselves. We, we, don't, we don't sell them in our office to them, take the money. No, it's all part of the fee they have to pay. Do you have sponsors? Do we have sponsors? Do you have, do you have team sponsors? No, we, uh, we don't have team sponsors. Uh, what they do is I have a soccer board. They're all volunteers. Uh, and I, I, just to let you know, there's over 600 kids involved in park and recreation soccer. It's a huge program. We probably have more kids in the town of Hamden, in our, in our, our town here compared to Hamden. Uh, basketball, we have over 400. Uh, so uh, there's a, a lot of lot of people uh, involved in those two particular programs. So we uh, uh, specifically to answer your question. You don't you don't have spot nobody. I, I go into different restaurants and I'll see, you know, teams and stuff. I I assume that yeah, Little comes. League does that. Touchdown clubs that, but they're not through Park and Recreation. They're not right. sponsored by us. The uh, Board of Finance has regulations, one of which is number four, <clears throat> which is, requires Park and Rec to come before the Board of Finance annually <coughs> and tell us what programs you're doing and how much revenue we're receiving and whether or not we're making or losing money on any of those programs. That has never happened. Two years ago, I brought to the Chairman of the Board of Finance uh, filled it out. It was a complete report about ARF. It, it indicated how ARF was run and operated. It gave the number of programs. Uh, I did it again another year. Uh, if you would like a report this year, I can provide that as well for you. I was. I don't know if anybody else does, but I was. I, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. Not a problem. Good. I think it would be a good thing for you to know as well as us. I would think. Yeah, and, and that's fine. We do keep track of that, and I'll be happy to provide that with you. Not, not a problem at all. I have one here, actually, you can have, but it's from uh, 15, 16, 16, 17. I do have one. It was just completed uh, for this coming year, so I can good. provide That'd that with you. I'll get it to John. You can it will be distribute it amongst your real things. That would be fine. So, so you have yeah. 600 kids playing Soccer. In the soccer and program, 400 well, about playing, 600, yes. 400 playing basketball. About 400 in basketball, yes. So that's how many teams is that? That's a lot of teams. It's a lot of teams, boys and girls, yes. Uh, that's not all Clinton, is it outside? Kids as well? Uh, we do take, uh, we don't take registration from outside because uh, our enrollment in town is, is such a large enrollment, we don't do that. Some of our programs we do allow non-residents, they do pay an extra fee for that, for $25 fee, yes. I have a question on the budget. Um, you have listed uh, the seasonal maintenance, which I'm assuming the seasonal is from May to September. Um, is that one position or two? Because it looks like it's, you know, more. You have a part-time position for fifteen thousand, and the seasonal one is like nine thousand something. So is it one person, two? I I have two people, two and people. I split it up because they go seven days a week. Again, they're they're less than nineteen hours, right? No, the seasonal can work. Uh, 30 hours, that's not a problem because it's seasonal uh, and they do not, I do not require to do that. So they're outside the bargaining unit, I guess you have probation time or something to use on benefits? I, I, I don't know, John. All I know is I'm not required to get benefits for seasonal, which is 10 weeks uh, for season, consists of 10 weeks basically. you say you do or you don't? Does we do not. We do not. Seasonal, no. 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 I guess. We do not. We're not required. To so whatever no. whatever union is covering Parks of Rec is saying that mm. if you're seasonal, 
even if you're working you're 30, you're not part of the collective yeah. bargaining agreement. So, for somebody who's really mean, they just keep saying, I want to keep hiring you for summer, fall, winter, winter spring. Yeah. yeah, we have sports for all seasons. Don't get no ideas. Don't get no ideas. <laughs> So have you consolidated anything into DPW in the last few years? Uh, specifically, have you consolidated any work into Department of Public? Oh, yes, yes, quite a bit, yes. Uh, they basically, uh, our maintenance of all our fields and everything else basically uh, runs through them, uh, provide work orders for them, and they, and they take it from there. So we've consolidated quite a bit. With Were you doing that before? Pardon? Were you doing that before and budgeting for that before? Uh, we were budgeting prior to that, and now our budget has been cut back because they have some more and more of that part of the, the, the budget process. And when did you do that? When, at what point did you consolidate that over to DPW? Approximately what year? What fiscal year? Uh, well, it started about five years ago. Okay. And then last year, probably the biggest cut went. Uh, a good part of the money that uh, we used to uh, we used to. Uh, maintain our fields and things like that when it went to book, uh, public works and they consolidated that one. So uh, basically what our, our role is is to make sure that uh, if there's an issue or things like that, that public works is aware of it, that they get work orders to do that. Um, we have scheduling meetings every year. We work hand in hand to make sure that what we're throwing at them is something that they can properly handle maintenance-wise so it doesn't get out of hand for them. So it, it, it's, a, it's a nice uh, relationship with what uh, Park and Rec and Public Works has as far well as uh, maintaining the fields. And, and but that would have been before fiscal year 2015, I presume. Yes. Okay. That, that would assume that Public Works' budget is increased. As yours is decreased, then they're picking up the work. We assume that it's going up on their side. Yeah, that, that's, I'm, I'm not sure specifically how much or anything else, but they have assumed what we used to have to pay for, and they have assumed that, so. You would think their budget would reflect that, right? Uh, the, I, don't, I don't do, I, I said you would, would assume that that was happening, right? It multiplies the fish in the loaf, don't worry about it. Okay. I mean, the idea of that is to, to get some synergies in the wrong words. Well, I do know that word, synergy. Yeah. I, I will say this, though, it, it's definitely a safer city of town uh, because they do a lot of the work that would have cost us more to contract yeah. out. So it is definitely uh, going to save us some time. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I want the, um, that revolving account. Um, you have, it's, a, it's a checking account, I presume. No, it is not no. a checking account. We do not, we do not have a checkbook. No. Okay. So again, so, again, any any payment you have to request for the finance, okay. I have to send down a paper request, and then it's paid to finance. We do not write checks. We don't. We don't okay. None Good. of that. No, it's all through the finance. Was your time? Good check and balance. Was your time that you did? Did you? Never. Now some towns do do that. I will say that yep. in their activity account, they do have their own check and everything else. But I, I prefer this. It's a good checks and balance. Yeah. And my question was about internal control, and you've anticipated all of them. The, uh, the computer has taken on a, a great deal of work uh, that used to be done by people within your organization, is what I understand. Uh, how much has the computer accelerated the amount of business you could do? Well, I, I'll tell you what it's basically is done. We're a stack of two full-time people. Uh, basically what, what the, uh, the, the uh, electronics have provided for us, okay, is to give us a better uh, accounting of our programs, make it much more efficient. Uh, provide, like I said, online uh, paying now, so it's cut back on that. But yes, it has cut back uh, on man hours as far as uh, what we have to do above and beyond our normal workday. Uh, and 
keep in mind that our programs have grown considerably and we would not be able to, to meet the demands of the community and provide some of the programs and the extra programs we do without that aid. You know, one thing that kind of puzzles me, I mean, we see the enrollment in the schools going down at a pretty rapid uh, rate, and yet you seem to be going up in participation. Those two don't, don't seem to, to jive. How do, you, how do you, what do you think? People are just more sports oriented than they were 10 years ago? It, or? You know what? It, it's a funny thing. It's, it's, it's like a revolving thing. It's like the art thing. We have some programs one year are very, very popular and drops off because the ages mm -hmm. shift. And then we have other programs that we just put in because of different ages. We have a lot of different programs. So it's not just for the youth in town. Uh, we have a theater group, you know, Park and Rec theater group. So that's for all ages, all things. We, we have uh, senior uh, classes up at my building. We have painting. We've had dance, we've had ballroom dance, so we provide a lot. Just you buy a limit? No, but if you want to teach a class, let me know. <laughs> uh, so we do provide more. It's not just the youth, and it's, it's just not just sports. So it, it's well rounded. And, and what we try to do is I have a, uh, a survey going out right now to try to get some more input currently, what else we, we could look into, what things people are happy with in the community, what things are not, what things we could do to improve services to park and recreation. So that's what we're going to be going out in the month. How is it going out? Mail or online? A uh, monkey. It's going to go out a monkey survey. A monthly survey? A monkey, a monkey survey. What's a monkey survey? Yeah, a monkey survey is a we hired a company, we put together what the format we like to have them send out. They sent it out, people respond back to it, then we get the results. It's online. Yeah. Through these things. Okay, where's that? The monkey, the monkey then? Yeah, it's part of the, uh, yeah. Monkey is in the... Monkey see, monkey do. Line item. You wonder how many bananas it is, I know. <laughs> so that's an online survey. Yeah. General supplies. Yeah. Yeah. Survey, survey supplies. Survey market. <laughs> survey market is what it's called. All right. Okay. Beats money in, money out in the old days. Right? Used to have a shoe box. That's true. Any other questions? Tom can't shoe box. Buster Brown. Buster Brown. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, who's left? Pete. I thought you were supposed to be first. The first to become last. Uh, meeting that is so. so. The first to become last. Yeah, first. You must have points. Who is left? Todd Ajak. He is the assistant director of the board. So, I'm indoctrinating him into this process. So, he gets through to me. That's why. So, 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 uh -huh. so are we supposed to haze him tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <definitely. laughs> what number are we here? You want to do Wasim first? Because we do Wasim as well. Okay. Wasim is 12. 12 rooms. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah
Uh, we've gone to the aerobic system, which is similar to what the school uses, um, uh, where you mix up cleaning solutions for about one-fifth of what you would spend for town going to the store and buying the same solutions. So those have all been installed this week. They'll be trained on them. And uh, there are certain things that we recognize that the staff isn't large enough to do, so we've looked at bringing outside agencies to, like, take these floors and clean the larger floors do some of the work that needs to be done. Um, they have to request time off through us. There's just a bunch of different things that have to occur now. Um, consequently, we've, we seem to have gotten to a good stable situation with them. The buildings appear to be cleaner. Uh, you know, they've done more work, you know, and uh, we are tracking what they're doing in terms of the town hall police station at the annex building. The part-time uh, custodian does two nights, two days a week at the public works facility, and he does Saturdays. And Who's the senior custodian? The senior custodian, there is no senior custodian. It's the one that's been employed the longest is John, but there's no more head custodian, no more senior custodian. No, they're all custodians. Some get paid more because they've been here longer. They're on the cusp. Uh, yeah, the head custodian, that was a supervisor's position that was moved to uh, public work, the head custodian position. So I did ask, the only thing I did ask, we had custodians that work uh, 40 hours, 35 hours, and 30 hours. I did ask them to all be brought up to 40 hours uh, because we did remove one full-time employee to compensate a little bit for that. Any problems with that? With what? I, you know, it's there was nothing in their contracts that created this. Created right? what? This 40, 35, 30. No, I don't know how they were hired and who they hired. and. They're not contractual. I mean, yeah, they, they are. They're in the unit, they're, but there's no problem with increasing. But, but within, within the collective bargaining room, there's a 40 hour week, right? I so. No. They each have their own schedules. What happens is they sometimes work 40 hours, but they don't get paid overtime until they've done 40 hours. I can't answer for the contract. contract. I can't answer for the contract. I'm just saying right now they're scheduled for 30, 35, and 40 hours. We want to bring, for instance, Dave, who's the custodian who works here, 30 hours. 30. 30 hours. He takes care of this building in the annex. Jose, who takes care of the police department, works 35 hours, and John O'Connell works 40 hours. So what you've done though is you brought everybody up to 40. So I want you, to bring. We have it oh, yet. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Next year. All right. Do we need to do anything? Is that in this the budget? Con the contract, sir. I don't believe so. But even so, I don't think they're going to argue with us that no. you're going to bring it up to 40 hours. You're going to pay them for it. No. Because they don't get overtime until they get 40 anyway. So if they, 30 so hours. Of, so it doesn't matter. Another no, it doesn't matter. Okay. So if they go to 30 hours, they've got to work to 40 straight time, and then they get overtime after but 40. One thing about health care is the health care, if we have one less person, it's one, one less person will pay your health care. That's right. That position was transferred to cover Todd's position at Public Works. Right, but I'm so you didn't have to create another position to cover his position. Right. Correct. Because what you're doing could be a model for us to look at some other areas. Okay. Silence is gold. Yeah, yeah. What you don't see in here is uh, you'll see it, there's about 18, a little over $18,000 in maintenance money that you see has disappeared out of this budget. Mm -hmm. And it's through the magic it has reappeared as six thousand dollars in the public works book. Mm -hmm. So basically, we took eighteen thousand, we cut it twelve thousand, moved six thousand dollars over. I think part of the problem is and Todd and I meet not too many times during the day, to be honest with you. But part of the problem is we keep discovering things that nobody knew about or were never really outlined clearly. Uh, Contract with Sintis where we're paying fourteen hundred dollars a year for soap dispensers. So we're gonna change that. So we're gradually changing all that. And uh, how about the water bottles? The what? How about the water bottles? The water this budget water is that one under. He's worried about water bottles. Water bottle? Yeah. Uh, budget that for safety. Yeah. Um, your nation. Anyway, so that's Wasam all we've really done is move the eighteen thousand out. Uh, of that 18,000, added six to the public works department <coughs> building maintenance, and then uh, have eliminated the other 12,000, and have requested the addition to bring everybody up to 40 hours. 
Okay. And that 40 hours is in this. In this it's in this budget. It's, it, this is covered in here. <coughs> and this is bringing down 80, 185 to 153. Correct. But he's also moving. It's already been Eight. moved. That's already been moved. Right, that's done. That's it. That's been moved this year. Okay, is there anything that the uh, selectmen have done that you have problems with here? No. Okay. Looks good to me. I like what you're doing. Well, let's hope you feel the same way in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said the first. That's the bigger budget. This is the yeah. last one. Yeah. All right. So yeah. are we all set? What level are we going yeah, to now? I just now? have one quick question on the overtime because I see the the board of selectmen recommended to, to decrease it. Why is there even overtime? It sounds like you've got good coverage. Is it? There are times when there's custodian, you know, they all have vacation time, they all have sick time, they all have other time. So there are times when the town hall is open at night, and John may not be able to come in at night, so we have to cover it with overtime with another custodian coming in. Okay, or so it's not like for events that... No, events are paid for and billed for and paid for unless the Board of Selectmen determines to donate the services. Okay, that was... So that doesn't show up on any of the Right. Okay. Any other questions? Right. Not going to the public works or right? <laughs> 21. 21. Then 21. All right. There is a mistake on this budget, so I'll tell you about it now. Inadvertently, between somewhere where I trans transmitted the budget and it wound up, under the salaries part time, the 7,200 hours was eliminated. Second line item down, that needs to be put back in. That is the gentleman that works at the transfer station every Saturday. So the request is in. For yeah. The, for so the, it should be 7,200 bucks. So what happened with the board? Of, I, it never the made, their, it, never made it, it to their desk. So you didn't? I didn't notice it because I was, I was working off of my okay. budget sheet's not there. So, I so would we don't know if they would approve it or not? Well, you can well, either you do that or, put, or increase my overtime by $18,000 to cover it on not Saturdays. Not I'm good either way. We don't. I only have one full-time position at the transfer station on weekends. So I have one full-time person and this part-time person there. That's what we do. So, let's see. So right here, there's only one person at the transfer station. That's about as low as I can make the staff. And then anytime there's snow. So is that something to plop? No, we keep it open now. We haven't closed the transfer station in three years. Three years. So I thought, I thought every time we snowed you. Nope. No, we've been able to get Absolutely not. Oh, you mean I can stay at home and not go into the I, You know, I go through this quite a bit. We announce it. We always say on Facebook and on the front page and everywhere that the transfer station's open. Come see the snow at the transfer station. You know what you're going to put on the, on the website and say, you yeah. don't have to check. We have a Facebook page. With you don't have to open. check when it's snowing because it's open. Because my wife checks. No, so you have, I mean, if it's a I blizzard, don't people do that. nobody should get out. Yes. It, I, I mean, if it's her. like snowing. Yeah. There are no yeah. show, but it's yeah. If it's so bad that you can't see in front of you, we do close. But yeah. generally speaking, we're open. Yeah. Okay, so the number, instead of 1837, which is flat, would be one eight four four one six Correct. three four. Well, until you guys finish with this, but yes, you would have to increase. We have to increase it by the seventy two hundred. Okay. Okay. But you've also, in defense, it's, you've added other items into this Correct. budget that weren't there before. Yeah. Correct. Right. So he would have been actually not not flat. He would have been actually when you add take out what you moved in from other budgets. You would have been. Yeah, I mean. I mean, when you if look, you look at it, it it's basically, you the thing up, you would, I mean, my yeah. increase is less than what I have to yeah. raise are for public works employees. So very briefly, you, sh you should have a sheet that looks like this as part of your backup detail, which lists how each, each part of the budget is made up by account number. Um, and you will see the difference between last year and this year. Parentheses obviously being a negative and uh, straight numbers are positive, and you'll see some that are just zero, which has been no plus or minus to it. Um, 
Now their contract expires when? This June expires, I believe. So, so yeah. you're looking at? I'm not, yeah. So I think they're negotiated this spring. So you budgeted? I don't own. budget that area. But it's, in other words, what we're looking at salaries is No, current. they didn't budget zero. They increased. You looked at it. I think, I don't know if they did or not, did they? Did they build yeah. an increase? No, I don't know. Yeah. No, they had, they put a good crease in. Mm -hmm. Went from 924 to 951. Where is this? Is that what this year is at 900, and that is that for the increase rate? Step increase. What, what line are we Just a step in? increase. Just a step increase. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah, no. Where are we? What, what are we which They're uh, asking about salaries. salaries. Oh. Regular employees? Yes. The contract expired. Full time. So for us, the unknown, and of course, you, never, you don't ever want you, you don't ever want to budget ten percent, right? right? No, I don't think so. No, so you uh, you budget zero, and then you tell the you know the bargaining table you we have problem, right? Right. right? Right. Contingencies are for, I guess. Which side you been on? Who? <laughs> yep. I've been on. I I've, I've bargained with five different unions. I've bargained. So, in relation to what Bo was talking about, stuff coming out of his budget to our budget, basically all the <coughs> all the athletic field, which we do anyway, the athletic field maintenance came, basically it was transferred over. I'll be coming to see you next Monday anyway about uh, some more additional savings. Um, we're in the process of analyzing. We haven't been in there a full year yet. Like we haven't been in building maintenance a full year yet. Mm -hmm. So we are continuing to analyze uh, how that all operated and continue to analyze the budgets for the building maintenance staff. Could you indicate to me on a separate memo, Board of Education, what you've taken on and what the costs are yeah. and what line items it is on the Board of Education side? I, I can do see, that. I want to see the decrease is what I'm telling you. Uh, we haven't taken anything new on from the Board of Ed and probably since we initially took it over. Since we initially took it over six so years ago. So when we take when we do something there, hmm. how does that work? Do they in other words, are they are they shifting monies, you know, into different accounts? Yeah, when you come in to do a project like a summer project and you're Doing something for the board. Flooding the water, flooding or some of that stuff. Is right? that is is where is that is that part of your fiscal budget? You've already budgeted all these things in and didn't know they were going to happen, or do they come to you and say, "Hey, we need we need depends, help here"? You no, know, depends on the project. Sometimes they buy the materials and we provide the labor. And depending on on the, the timing and what the project is on. So if it's just labor. The labor's already there. Correct. Okay. We've, we've expensed that already. Correct. If it's anything else, it well, isn't. For instance, we added a portion of the sidewalk at the New Morgan School. They uh -huh. paid for the materials. We did a lot of work around the tennis courts at the New Morgan School. They paid for the materials. Uh -huh. We did work in the, you know, part of the problem we're going to have is the, the uh, rain ponds or the drainage facilities that water the service the uh, parking lots and service the athletic fields uh -huh. are going to need constant maintenance, which I don't think was ever planned by anybody. Right. Is, is um, any of this... Hmm? And don't we need a lot of permitting for that? It's not so much the permitting. It's the it's really the what they're requiring for maintenance. Uh, we, we've we been back and forth probably for two years on a maintenance plan, uh -huh. trying to come up with an agreement. Um, uh -huh. We just finally settled on the plan this year, but the, the difference between the old school and this school is significant in terms of manpower. Manpower. Mm -hmm. Well, manpower translates into Dollars. more wear and tear on the equipment, more gasoline, more, you know, I mean, when you look at it and add it up, it's, a, it's probably a, a four-fold increase on what's required. Four-fold? Easy. And what, what, you what was the do? base number you were looking at? About hours I was looking at. Oh, how many hours? Well, I was looking at you know we used to be able to do the athletic cut around the school in about an hour and a half at right. the old Morgan. Now you're talking right six now hours. It's, it's two guys that take five and a half six hours. 
the, all day. It's a big difference. That doesn't include, you know, the no mow grass that needs to be mowed and the meadow mix that needs to be meadowed and the, you know, there was never a discussion about the maintenance of the, uh, of the storm surge ponds that service the parking lot and that there was never any. It's, it's all of it. It's, you know, it's, it's a much bigger, the athletic fields are probably two and a half times the size of what we were maintaining before. Mm. Okay. So the amount of water you're using is probably double what you were using before. The amount of hours were at least double what you're using before. So overall, plus you're, you know, we're still required to kind of maintain the old building at this point. So it's significant. I have not sat down and done a hour by hour cost of what it costs to perform that work. And what is your capital budget? I know we're going to do it differently, but yeah. what's your capital budget looking like? My capital yeah. budget for the department? Yeah. I don't, it's maybe 82000 somewhere in that area. 82? Yeah, somewhere in that area. Okay. I'm happy. It's not that big. Town infrastructure. Now, I'm, I'm looking at this page in the back and the page in the front, and some of the stuff doesn't seem to be... Well, they, they made some changes. I didn't make any changes yeah. in my budget. So the, this, so the number up here is the one I should be looking at? Yes, the one on the front page, front page. with what the Board of Selectmen did. And, and they I lowered one account by 10000 and then 7000 But I, I mean, I was in that meeting, and I mean, it seemed to me like that you were going to, that my impression was you were going to ask us to put some of that money back in. Are you asking us to put anything no. back in? Okay. I'd love to have you put it back in, but I'm realistic about it as well. I mean, it's a $1.8 million budget. They asked me where I would like to have it removed from if they had to remove it, and I gave them the line to take it from. Right. That's which has the most that. flexibility. Uh, right now we have 15 service contracts that are due a, due a year from the spring. And right now, it looks like we're going to be going out for about 19, 18 to 19 service contracts to add some new stuff in. And it's, that we're doing now, but it's not under service. You're going, to, you're going to outsource? Is that what you're saying? Say it again. You're going to outsource things that you're currently doing? I outsource stuff that you couldn't afford to do. It's like checking emergency lights and fire extinguishers and, you know, trash, porta potties. Mm -hmm. Generator repair. Are you adding things? Are you? Are no, you it's stuff that we actually uh, have had to add due to life safety codes over the last couple, last year or two. So it's stuff that we're already doing currently. We're just going to go out to bid with. It. Hopefully, get a better price. Better. But you're doing it internal externality. You're saying. Yeah, exterminator, fire extinguishers, emergency lighting. Those would be the three right now. So you think you can outsource things that you're doing internally? No, we're not doing it internally. It's, it's that being done by outside sources. So you're going, to, you're going to try to get better prices on things you're currently doing? I can't know what you're saying. You're trying to get better prices Correct. on things that you're currently doing? Part of the issue we had was, when the, for instance, Life Safety Code says that we're supposed to confirm that every emergency light in every building on the town is working on a monthly basis and we're to inspect every fire extinguisher on a monthly basis. Well, that's fine. The problem with that is we did not have an accurate inventory of any of those things. So we hired a company that's come in and done that. And now we have an accurate inventory, which we now can go out and go out to bid on. So it's, a, it's all those things that you have to put together in order to get an accurate bid that, you know, so to go out and actually seek. Uh, so we had people that were doing those things. No, I don't have people that well, were doing it. I hired a company, Shipments Fire but, Equipment. Was but originally, coming. originally, did we used to do that? No, we didn't do it at all. It wasn't required. It's now. No, it's always been required. It's always been required. Well, it's just we we've, always, always, we've always contracted out to somebody. No, no, we never no, did we it. Never did it. No, we didn't do it. It's required. We just didn't do it as a town. When we took over the building say, maintenance. We don't do that are required. A couple of years ago, when we took over the building yeah. maintenance, we yeah. started to put that program into effect. Yeah. You're okay until you get caught. Or you have a disaster. Or, fire, or you have fire. It's fire like tanks in the ground. He's the one that enforces the life state. Yeah, he's the one that told us we had to 
Alarm. So he finally, after 10 years, decided that he's going to it's find not, something? It's not a question of deciding. It's a question of evaluating your facilities. No, I, understand. Through I, understand. It. I know. I well, listen, he inspected all the facilities. Yeah. Right. OSHA came in right. seven years ago. Seven years ago. We got fined for not inspecting in fire extinguishers, for not having a lockout tagout program, for having old chains sitting in the corner that weren't labeled or tagged. So gradually, you know, they're due back in. Usually they come within 10 years, so they're due back in shortly. And all, I guess you're all your mixing of whatever chemicals you're going to be kind of. Well, we have a, we actually we actually have a company that does all the life safety data books for us now. Do they let we you know when they're coming? Pardon me. Does OSHA let you? No. They just show well, they knock on the door. Yeah. They knock on the door and say we're here. <laughs> they're they're cooperating. With you. We'll have to so we've gone to a, a cloud-based system for material data. It doesn't. It's very inexpensive, and they update, and then we just provide the information. We've uh, started to eliminate or remove a lot of stuff from the town hall and consolidate uh, solutions so that they're uniform throughout all the town buildings to eliminate a lot of that problems that we've had. And uh, the next big front on this building is we have to do an electrical upgrade here. Yeah. Is that going to be a big deal? It's going to be a big deal, yeah. We're going to start off slow, but it is. So all, all, even all these outlets? No, our are problems are really in the administrative suites. None of our administrative areas meet code from the electrical standpoint, or very minimal. So one of the big areas we have to do is like the town clerk and land use. So we're trying to come up with. We're talking about rewiring. We're just talking yeah, about no, because we, you got things on power cord, power cord, power cord, power cord. Power, cord. <laughs> power strips. Oh, power power strips. Strip, power strips and the power strips. So, uh, fire marshal already put us on notice. He's inspected the building. We do have to do some crazy. So, our service is okay here. Pardon me. Is our service up? Service is fine here. It's so really it's basic distribution. Of yeah, but it's not that easy because it's an so, old building, you know. So well, no place to run wire. No, you have to like in the land use office. We have to do something in there that's going to be dramatic. And right now, we're looking at putting decorative columns in. <laughs> and then running wires down through the decorative columns so it doesn't look like your standard tech wiring. That sounds uh, cool. Well, you know, make it look like decent so it looks like yeah. it's part of the room. But it's a nice chase, you know. Yeah, I mean something that looks decent. But you know, you're gonna put wire chases in, it's gonna be false we're gonna put a false wall up in the town clerk's office. Run wiring in a false wall in front of one of their countertops. So there's a bunch of different things, but it, you know, it's it's not cheap. So uh, you have a deadline for that code? Or? I'm supposed to be working on it now. I've already done some pre-work on it already with, with our electrician. Is, is but, that in here? Huh? Any of that in here? No, no the that's in your infrastructure funding. That's no, a plan there. program. But that's in there, right? In the infrastructure funding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This this budget contains very this little is, in the way of any kind yeah. of project. You look at it, it's all assigned. Operations. It's all yeah, operations. it's all really uh, operations. There's a little bit for HVAC and a little bit for generator, but not enough to cover what we're repairing this year, even so. You know, basically, this thing is just going really totally here it is, here it is, and then, you know, all the repairs are being a little bit different. You said that you were going to do contracts for um, like uh, alarm systems. That's done. And what were the other things? Alarm systems, we uh, just very briefly, we upgraded all the alarm systems that did go out the bid on that on the last round. Um, the original alarm costs for running this building were $15,000 a year. We had that down to about $2,000 a year. Um, we're going to go out for emergency lighting and emergency lighting, emergency which lighting. is a monthly check and then repairs and fire extinguishers which cover the fire department, police department here, and public works. That includes the monthly inspections and the refills, which we've been that out to. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're going to split the Ansel systems from the hood cleaning systems. We had them as a paired, had them together, and it just didn't work out. I'm sorry, the what systems? Ansel systems, those are the ones you have on your hoods. Automatic fire extinguishers on underneath your cooking hoods. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they have to be inspected technically twice a year. How many um, cooking hoods do we have? Uh, five. Six. 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 Sorry. Six. 
park and rec up there. Yeah, not to that park and rec. You have, uh, you have, uh, you have, uh, you have the, the fire department, you have the annex, you have here, you have the town dock, you got the town beach. Uh, there's one more somewhere else. Oh, Peter's. Peter's complex. We don't have anything to do with, with the fire department, I take it. Then. Say that again? We have nothing to do with the fire department building then, right? I can't hear you. We have nothing to do with the fire department building? Yeah, we do. So do, they must have some. Uh, they what? They must have some. Uh, uh, yeah. We we do that one. We do that one. Right. Okay. We inspect that one. Both. And so and I have a quick question. Um, first, I appreciate the level of detail that you gave us. Mm -hmm. It's fairly easy as a newcomer to follow all this. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure if this is a duplicative of what was presented earlier with the water pollution, but under the engineering and permitting, you talk about or you have listed Stormwater MS4 testing. That's a separate permit from them. From, from water pollution. It's got nothing to do with what they're. Yeah, this is what I was asking. Yeah. Questions about the surface. Uh, no, testing. this is what we have to do is we have to maintain two permits in town. One, should, one is an MS4 that covers the whole town for our stormwater drainage, and one is a permit for the public works facility. Okay, so so the testing is all related to those two permits. Okay, so that's that water sampling transfers. No. So, okay. Just looking to see if there's. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Believe me. Right, so we have to sweep the street. I had to turn a big report in how many tons of material we put on the streets in the winter, how much we take off. And, you know, that's all part of the permitting. Have to do water testing four times a year. Actually, what do you guys put down? Is it safe for the environment? Or for you? Because I, I think you spray sand it. Is, sand isn't even safe for the environment if you want to look at it. Well, no, I know you put sand in the winter, but you guys do something in the spring, too. Yeah. Oh, guard, for the guardrails? Yeah. Yes. What yes. is that? Cause it's, the same, it's the same material that the state uses to spray its guardrails, so it's all licensed by Connecticut D. Okay. And then we brought all that information to the Inland Wetlands well, Commission, no. and we serve part of it. We don't, we don't spray around wetlands, and we don't... Well, yeah, back to stop. Deep, deep says to me, spray frag. We actually use the stuff. They told me to use. Yeah, we use the, actually the state applicator as well. Yeah, they told me. Is it a poison? Or? It's a yeah. herbicide. But it's it's yeah. really written up. It's, my wife is all flipping out on the machine. No, no, because I know they spray on our street. No, nobody told them what it was. Well, but if you spray water, there. so it's wetlands where you spray. So we just can't. We can't spray at the outlets. If there's a pipe. They can't spray it there. But then you test the water to make sure that's what that's what, that's, that's, that's what Matt does. That's different. That's what Matt. That's different than our testing is we have to test stormwater discharge. So when it rains, they come in and test after it rains. Okay. But yes, we do spray guide rails. That's done by a state factor. And then you know, like when we have a lot of snow, you're you're only allowed to put the snow within a certain distance. First 24 hours, you can put it anywhere you want. After that, you can't put it within, it can't direct drain into it. We had a problem a couple of years ago with snow, I guess, right? Yeah. You're allowed to, the first 24 hours, you're allowed to dump into the water. I didn't know and then know. after that, you have to stockpile and let it melt. That's why you see we stockpiled a bunch of it down the town marina this year already. And uh, some of it, you know, something, we use the town beach as another stockpile. Pilot. We never dump. We the don't. Pilot had in Boston had been the best. Yeah, we never dump directly into the water. Any regardless, even if we're allowed to, we don't dump directly into the water. And how much? You know, how you doing? You, I guess you notified us all on Sandy Gravel. Uh, you? We're going to come and ask. I'm coming Monday night and asking for, for appropriation for sand and salt. Because since you sent us that memo, we had three times you had to drop with the yeah, right? we're, yeah, we're good now, but we're at we're at our point. The overtime, we're only at about 50%. Yeah, because we had a lot of little small storms, storms, a lot of small storms, storms, a lot of storms on street time. You know, well, an inch and a half storm is as good as a six inch storm in our world for sand and salt. Hmm. You know, just because it's only, even a half an inch is as good as well, four like inches. Yeah, rain, you use the rain, same amount rain of material. And cold, you gotta go out yeah. You probably had ice on the road. You had to go out and sand. We had yeah. to go out to yeah. yeah. It's all in the first. No inch. snow at all. It was rain and then a yeah. quick freeze. We had black ice the other morning. Last yeah. week we had to go out for it, and we had a quick spurt of snow the last week that we had to go out midday for. 
And then we've had black ice a couple, which is, you know, we don't normally get that too much of that here, but we've had black ice. We had to go out and see them this morning a couple spots in town. So. How are those identified? How do you identify where this stuff is? We have our problem spots yeah. that we know. If you get a heavy rain like we did Sunday, right. you're going to get the runoff. So the same places tend to. Yeah, or yeah, the same police time. department's on the road 24 hours a day. So let, let us you know. know. We did take over the sanding for the schools this year, both total sanding for the schools this year. I mean, we sanded them anyway, but we took over the spot sanding in the morning. Um, and, uh, you know, when we have a storm now, it's just easier to, the next day, to have two guys come in at night for a couple hours and go out and just sand. And they talk to the police department about 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. And you take all the guesswork out of it, and then sometimes in the morning we'll bring them in at six hours on a schedule. If you do that, it's an hour of overtime. If you have to call them in and order them in, it's three hours of overtime. So sometimes we'll just you know schedule in the morning, have two guys come in at six o'clock and get ready for the buses and go out and see them. Any other questions? The one thing I would be interested in, and not this minute, but at some point, I know that you've consolidated the things that we've talked about, but to kind of get a list of the things over the last two years, not five years, but just the last two years, that you've consolidated in, and what it costs to be done in the old way, and what it's been cost, how much you're I can actually that. have last year's information, which you guys got, so I can just send you that information. Okay. This year, like I said, it's 18000 it's cost, it's saving 12 of that 18000 I'm going to come in with a proposal on Monday night that's going to save virtually half of what we call a $20,000, $25,000 program on a yearly basis. We're going to save over half of it uh, by just buying one piece of machinery. I already have the people certified to do the applications. So we're constantly... Uh, you know, Todd's constantly looking from the building maintenance end of it to see what we can do to mitigate or save money or cut the expenses. Uh, I constantly look at it from the operational sense in terms of what our programs and what we need to do. And then, you know, both of us look at the whole budget and, and come up. You know, you'll see that our maintenance, uh, our vehicle maintenance has dropped over 30 something thousand dollars in the last couple of years, dropped again this year because we have a better maintenance program, we track it a little bit better. Um, we were anticipating getting that truck, but you know, you know I got all messed up, so we will be back to talk about that, but uh, hopefully in a month. But what we're doing now with tracking all our, uh, well, a lot of stuff online, we have a ticketing program that all the department heads and the uh, secretaries, anybody can come in and put a ticket in if they have a question about a maintenance issue. So it comes to five of us. We all get a text message, unfortunately. It doesn't care what time of night it is. We get them anyway. Same with the alarm systems. Um, and then Todd keeps a very extensive database on all our equipment now so that we can look at repair costs and continuity and make sure we're not repeating uh, repairs all the time. So that's all led to a, uh, uh, a consolidation of costs. We keep beating it up as best we can beat it up, but there is a point of you know of no return on some of it. So, but I do have that credit. I think it was like sixty thousand last year, twelve thousand, so about seventy-two thousand dollars. In two years, our equipment maintenance has gone from one ninety, we're down to one twenty-five, just by watching. Just by watching a little bit better, better equipment. You know, another purchase will give us. He probably can knock that down even more. So, uh, you know, there is a point where you know you begin to get those things back. So just by the way we track our fuel costs and everything, you've seen that over the year that varies very little. We give you a, a pretty much we're on target. You know, sand and salt costs were off this year, but last year, you know, it's an average. Last year we saved money, so. Where is, where is our fuel park? When is it coming in? That is actually scheduled to go out to bid, hopefully, what John say? March? Next week? What is it? Two weeks? Fire? Is that Two weeks. Is? Yeah. Before. The tank expires in July 1st, so right. we have to be in process. So it's going on, I think, the bids, the, the bid date I, suit, I saw due back would be March 21st. 
Okay. And the contract award and then process. If, as long as we're in process, we're okay. Okay. But that's this fiscal year. Yeah. The other ones are the ones that are scheduled to be out at the two schools and at Morgan at the library. Um, the specifications are being finalized for those. And they're in process too. We've had them all pumped out. Was there, was there much in them? When you Pardon pumped, me? Was there much in them when you pumped them out? Yes, unfortunately. And there was a lot in them? Well, the library doesn't use oil in three years. And there was That's oil true. there. Good news the or bad news? There's oil in there. It may suggest it's not leaking if there's no oil in there. I mean, it's one of those. Well, what does it mean? You know, how do you interpret it? There's some, you know, there's some indications. Well, maybe at the old Morgan there's an issue, but we don't know until we get the tank out right around. But you don't know until you pull the tank. I thought the July, I thought the, the, the Morgan one didn't expire until July. July right? Yeah, it was coming out. At 8,000 gallons of fuel in it. Is that all? Wow. 8,000 8, gallons. So what do we do there? We contract with somebody to come in and pump that out and they pay us X amount. Do they pay us anything? We don't get anything back? No. They could use well, I mean, you don't. The, the, the cost of pumping it out was not as much as you would normally have to pay to pump it out. But no, you can't cool. sell it. You can't give it away. You can't do anything with it. Believe me. Carmine can use it. He runs. Yeah. <laughs> Carmine will be over so, here on, on Cedar Island pushing. Yeah, you know, we pump. What's the total gallons we pump? Putting in a swim pool. Right around twenty thousand gallons. Twenty thousand gallons, which have to be taken to a facility and tested. It's and considered and recycled. It's considered point. recycled at that point. We just pay for the truck load, the trucking. We pay for the trucking. We don't pay how for do we, anything. How do we sit on oil that for that long, but whatever? Well, I, you know, I'm going to go back to what I've said religiously for the last eight years. It's just nobody watching. So, everybody, you know, you get a lot of, I work for Bo Potter. I work for Tim at the docks. I work for the Harbor Commission. I work for the Board of Select, but I work for the police chief. We work for everybody. But, you know, there's a lot of things that have just occurred over the years that nobody's watched. And now that somebody, now that we're beginning to take those things apart and put them back together, you know, we're going to change the way we operate. I can't tell you why all these tanks are, I got two more tanks that are expired, but we can delay them until July. So, uh, underground. Huh? Underground. Yeah. Where? And one at the uh, north end station for the, the fire department. Fire. Just the fire department, one more tank, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, the one here is expired too. Town Hall and the uh, fire department. Now, are so, they, are, are they, they're no, are we using fuel oil any place? Yeah. Here, it switches. It's a dual fuel here. It's a dual fuel here, but we're going to eliminate it. It's a little gas oil there, right? Hmm? Hmm. What is this generator out here? Is that both gas and diesel? That's got to be self-contained. Separate tank. Separate tank, self-contained. Above ground. Why did we do that in natural gas? What we had it was from that store. Hey, just we moved salvaged over. it from the old police station and moved yeah. it over here. Unless right. you wanted to buy a new one, I'd be happy to do that. The one at the police station is natural gas. I mean, at the annex, that we just we transferred that out of Morgan, the old Morgan. It was propane, and we converted it to natural gas and put it over here. So wherever you know, you try to do whatever you can do, but you know, you lose so much. How about the million dollar burner was still paying off for the old Morgan. Pretty much, it was about a million dollar heating plant. Yeah. Nobody in the entire country wants that. We can't sell. It. Christine has been working on that, but yeah. to be honest with you, there's where, where did I see the steam? There's no. There's a line item on, on repairing a, a steam track. Where do we have the steam track at? Oh, the school. school right here. Right here. School. School. This is the steam system. Yeah. So Schools the have Pearson. Yeah. So, so we're still taking care of. What do we have? Is it is it twenty is it twenty pounds? What is it? How many pounds we got here? Not one twenty. One twenty? No, twenty. 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 Yeah, so, so, you know, you try to balance the heat in this building. It's twenty pounds. Pounds. <laughs> when you're trying to change some things. I've worked on one twenty. But yes, yeah, so there's, there's two steam boilers now. Yeah, two boilers. Two boilers. I'll tell you what, burn right through the two shirts. But so nothing. Christine's working on it. I know. When she gets I don't want to get, you know, listen, you know, Christine's going to have to, she's going to have the answer for that, not Progress. Huh? Progress. Huh? 
progress is the way. Well, but I mean, it, you know, it seems crazy. The, the bird Listen, is, what, five to years be old? No, to be honest with you, the time to do that was a year and a half ago. You know, it, it's that there may be well, some it stuff. It was we not, took a not discussed Wait a, a year and a half ago. We did take somebody through there. There's very little salvage. Somebody may want the parts off that boiler, yeah. but they're not going to take the boiler. The boilers are almost 10 years old. They're not going to take the boilers. No, it's not. No. So, but they may want some of the controls off. Yeah, but no efficiencies. You it's, can't hang you know, it off for four years, five uh, years now. And that's done. 2007. 2007. I think 2007 is on the stamp on the. Yeah. 12 years. Yeah, but I think it was a 15-year... Uh... Life. No. No. It was, a, it was part of a bonding package, wasn't it? Yeah, but the bonding remember. package was you know, like five years ago. That's no, no, no. That was, that was a different bonding package for that. Oh, okay. Because so it was 2007, we started planning it. Way before steel the... gas. You get more money for gas than you get for steel. <coughs> it's called junk. We sell steel every day. You can deliver it to your house. Cast, cast iron is good. You get what, how much is you get? Prices are up on steel and cast iron. They vary. We don't. It depends. You know, if you have a clean steel, it's one thing. We don't have clean steel. But we got all kinds of different pieces of steel in it. You know, all different kinds of. Stuff. That's a pound. Three fifteen a pound. It's not worth it for us. I remember it was about eighteen cents, and I was. It's not worth it. Yes, I do. I remember 18 cents when I was working at the trade. That's sure. when I was working. You mentioned that you took out 18000 out of the town maintenance Correct. budget, and then you got rid of 12000 You moved six to the public works? Yes, it went into... Where did it go? Where did it go? I'll tell you right now. It went into uh, general repairs and maintenance, uh, which is... Town buildings and facilities, but it's a line item in general repairs and maintenance. It's for fifty-seven thousand and went to sixty-four thousand, which is a total increase of six thousand eight hundred. That came from removal of Wasam fifty-four three hundred account, six thousand eight hundred forty-one and fifty-six one hundred twelve thousand and four dollars. Else? Not for me. Thanks, Pete. See you Monday. You don't want to come and visit us on Thursday? No, I don't think so. We're going to have a crowd meeting Thursday afternoon. Yeah. So that's it, right? I just wanted to go over the schedule for next week before you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 yeah. We're looking at kind of change. He keeps saying Monday, but. Monday is actually a holiday. Oh, okay. So we'll yep. So Tuesday, you actually have a regular board meeting and a budget What's workshop schedule. Okay. So. President's Day. Yep. President's Day. So I, I would I didn't know if the board was maybe might want to. Uh, is anybody available still at six that we can maybe do the regular meeting first at six and then go right into the budget workshop. I'm available at nine a.m. Okay. So does anybody have any objections for us doing 6 o'clock, we'll do our regular meeting, wrap that up, and then we'll do the budget meeting right after that. Any objections? No. No, no objections? And we have time to make the change. No objections. I'll, I'll send out an email to everyone. And no. the other thing is I was talking to Dawn, and some of, uh, Tuesday is um, emergency services, so those take a long time because it'll be police and fire and fire marshal and all them. So some of the ones that Dawn reports on, which is um, um, the health district, the CRAD, the you general government, we're going to add that to Thursday. Okay, swap them out. Put yep. in a meal. Turn the email. Human so services was here today? So we'll start at 6, so they the meeting. As soon as we're finished, go to budget meetings. And, yes. and then tell us which ones you want to swap out. Correct. Okay. So send us an email, right? Absolutely. Good. So, so what, what, what are we moving to? Uh, She's going to send you an email. Okay. And it's going to be all less confusing than right. 20 people calling us what it is. Got it. Okay. Well, that's it? We don't, so have, we don't have the German. No, we don't. No, it's not a real meeting.